In this question, we're again balancing an equation. Here we have a hydrocarbon, C6H13OH, and oxygen, O2, and that's going to make CO2 and H2O. So our process in this question is gonna be exactly the same as it has been so far. The only difference is that it might be a little bit more complex because we now have two different compounds on the left and two different compounds on the right of our equation. So first I'm gonna write out my equation, C6H13OH plus O2 goes to CO2 plus H2O. You'll notice when I write it out, I'm leaving big gaps between each compound. That's to give me space to write in my coefficients as I add them. Okay, next I need my table. So I should have my elements. I should have my reactants. And I should have my products. My elements are C, H, and O. Okay, so let's go ahead and count how much of each thing we have to start with. So for C, I have six C's here. So I'm starting with six C's on the left. On the right, I currently just have one C in that CO2 compound. Okay, as for H, we have 13 here and one here. So that's 14 in total on our reactant side. On the right, we have H2O, so we've just got two H's in that compound. For oxygen, I've got one here in my hydrocarbon and two here in my O2. So that's a total of three in my reactants. And then afterwards, I've got O2 in my CO2 and O in my H2O. So I've got three in total on the right-hand side. So to start with, our oxygen looks like it's balanced for now, but the carbon and the hydrogen are not balanced. So we could choose either of those to start with. I'm gonna start by balancing the carbon because there's only six of them rather than 14. So that looks a little bit easier to get started on. So I'm gonna go ahead, I want six of them on the right. So I'm gonna make an intelligent guess that I'm gonna want six CO2. So let's go ahead and count them up again. We've got six carbons on the left. We now have six on the right as well. For hydrogen, we've got 14 in our reactants on the left, and we still only got two on the right in our products. For oxygen, we've got one, two, three on our left, and we now have six times two, which is 12 on the right on our products. Okay, so our carbon is now looking good, but we have way too few hydrogens on the right hand side and way too few oxygens on the left hand side. Now I could choose which of these I want to have a go at balancing next. However, if you look, you'll notice oxygen is in every single compound in the reactants and every single compound in the products. So that's gonna make it a little bit trickier to balance since when we change one thing, it's gonna affect the oxygen as well. So because of that, I'm gonna leave oxygen to balance until last, and I'm gonna to choose to do the hydrogen next. It would still work if we went the other way, but this is gonna make our process a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. So I'm gonna have a go balancing the H here. Right now we have 14 on the left and only two on the right. And if you look, our H is in a H2O molecule. So if I wanted to have 14 on the right, which is my goal so I can balance, that would mean having seven H2O. So I'm gonna make an intelligent guess there, and I'm gonna guess seven as my coefficient for the H2O, and I'm gonna recount and see what my reactants and products are. So adding those up, I've got six carbons on the left in the reactants, and I've got six in the products. For hydrogen, I've got 13 and one, which is 14 in the reactants. In the products, I've got seven times two, which is 14. Now for oxygen, I have one, two, three in my reactants. And in my products, I've got six sets of two, so that's 12. And I've got seven sets of one. So 12 plus seven is 19. 
So I've got 19 oxygens in my products. Okay, so we can now see our carbons are looking good, our hydrogens are looking good, the oxygen is the last thing that we need to balance, and we can see if we look at our equation, oxygen is on its own on the left-hand side in the uh, reactants of our equation, so it should be fairly easy to get that to balance because we can add as many as we need there. So right now we have three, we need to get to 19. So to get from three to 19, we need to add 16. And we can see our oxygen is O2 here. So if we want 16 more, that means we want eight more sets of two. Currently I have one set, so I'm gonna put a nine here. That's gonna give me 16 extra oxygens because I had one to start with. Now I've got nine, so that's eight extra sets of O2. Eight times two is 16. And let's go ahead and see if this balances our equation. So now we've got six carbons on the left and six carbons on the right. For hydrogen, we've got 13, 14 on the left, and we've got seven times two, which is 14 on the right. For oxygen, we have one single one here, and then we have nine sets of two. So nine times two is 18, plus one extra is 19. On the right-hand side, we've got six sets of two, which is 12, and seven sets of one. So 12 plus seven is 19. Awesome, so we can see our carbons are balanced, our hydrogens are balanced, and our oxygens are balanced. We've done it. So let's go ahead and fill in our coefficients here. We had one set of that hydrocarbon, nine sets of oxygen, six sets of carbon dioxide, and seven sets of H2O. And we can just check our answers in our table here. We had six carbons before and six after, 14 hydrogens before and 14 after, 19 oxygens before and 19 after. So you can see, again, every time the steps are exactly the same for solving these balancing problems. And you could just go by brute force and add one each time when you notice a discrepancy in the numbers. What we did here was speed up the process a bit by making some intelligent guesses based on how many we needed to add. We added a coefficient number that would get us closer to where we need to be. So that can speed up your process, but it doesn't matter if you don't get it right the first time or after three steps or four steps even, you'll get there eventually.